I'm Denise with Artist Heart Paint Party. You have to customize it. Make something that you like. Make it personal to you. However that is. Oh! <laughs> That's so cute! I love his little hat. You could be painting your bunny in. I just, so this is a pretty spring bunny and I think that nice, lighter, you know, softer colors look really nice for spring pastel. As big or as small as you want. Hey Nisi. Hey Rach. Can you slow down a little bit? Sure thing. Actually, I thought it was almost looking like a butterfly, but uh, I thought it would be cool and I had an apple today, so I saved the core. <laughs> That's a great. I wasn't sure if it would work or not, but I thought I'd give it a try. Yeah, I really like that you're reusing the material that may not seem to have a purpose and might have otherwise been thrown out. Right. Well, hi, you guys. I'm Denise with Artist at Heart, and I am so happy to be here with you guys today. So today we are going to do a bushel of apples. All right, let me adjust myself here a little bit. I feel like I'm not quite on the camera. So a little quick adjustment here. Better? Okay. You guys, I want you to start with pencils. Okay. These are my favorite pencils. They're super strong, durable, right? But I'm going to use a, a, a marker so you can see it better, but get a nice sharp pencil. Okay. <laughs> Nice, good, electric sharpened pencil. Nothing like that, right, you guys? All right, so I want you to use a pencil to draw. I'm going to use a Sharpie because you can see it better. All right. All right, so again, any size Sharpie. And you guys, I have my canvas pad here. So this is where I'm gonna do my sloppy copy on my canvas pad. Let me scooch over a little bit. Okay. All right, so this is my canvas pad. It's great because it has lots of pages and you can do many, many art projects with it. So, and you can use any supplies, right? So you guys, any supplies you want. So I'm gonna use Sharpie to sketch out my thing so you can see it better but i want you to use a pencil all right so my format i'm going to do portrait or it's vertical all right and i am going to start with a horizontal slightly curved line here and then i'm going to do another one underneath it okay then I'm going to connect the edges. Is it perfect? No. Does it have to be? No. All right. So that's the top lip of my bushel. And then I'm going to do this. Think of it like a smile. Smile. Okay. And then I'm going to do another one here and here. Smile. So it's slightly curved. And I just like to do a practice one first. I'm going to put some lines in my basket too. So it's a vertical line. curve around here so it looks like it's dimensional. And then I'm going to fill my basket with apples. So let's start with the center apple. So I have enough room for the other ones. Okay, and again, you don't even have to have it say apples. And it's look at mine's a little lopsided, isn't it? Okay, it's not. 
it looks more lopsided on the camera than it does on my sketchbook. <laughs> but that's why we practice, you guys. Right? All right. So next. Okay. Next, if you guys want to add the words, you can. So I'm going to sketch out apples at the top. Okay. Again, I'm going to use my Sharpie. I want a five cent apple. Do apples really cost five cents? No, inflation, right? Inflation. Okay, but you don't have to do apples. You guys can totally change it up. You can do pumpkins, right? You can fill your bushel with pumpkins. You can do it in black and white. So it could be, you know, just different value of black, gray, white. And, you know, you, you want to... Um, put it like on a table or you can give it that wood look background. So again, you would just do maybe some horizontal lines here to give it that plank look. I would probably use a straight edge or a ruler to give it a better look, like a better straight line than me just freehanding it here. Oh, I need an apple down here. Yeah, there's my other apple. Put, make a little wood plank here. Gives it that rustic look, right? A little bit more rustic look. All right. So there, again, that's my sloppy copy. I always start with the sloppy copy just so you get an idea of, well, it's a little lopsided or I didn't really center it. So it gives me a better idea of how to do my finished one. So, and you guys can use any supplies that you want to, to color it in. Today, you guys, I'm going to use Crafts for All acrylics. Love these. So I don't know if you guys know that acrylic paint comes in different bodies or weights. So if it's in like a little liquid squeezy bottle, that's a lighter to medium uh, body acrylic. So it's thinner, so it's not quite as opaque. So the thicker ones that come in a tube, they're more opaque, more dense. The color is richer. You could always thin it with a little bit of water, but I like that opaqueness because it covers up my mistakes. <gasps> Yes, I make mistakes all the time. Okay, so now I am going to go to my good one. All right. So you guys, I'm gonna use a variety of colors today. I'm gonna use red, I'm gonna use yellow ochre, I'm gonna use some brown to warm it up, a little black, a little green. All right, so here's my sloppy copy. Let's move on to the good one. All right. So I'm using canvas now. Here's what I did this on. So I have a bunch of these, right? So I do a lot of practicing on these. And now I'm going to do my canvas. So again, my format is vertical or portrait style. I'm going to use a Sharpie so you can see it better, but I want you guys to use pencils and have an eraser, right? In case you make a mistake. All good? Okay, here we go. So I'm going to start the same way. I'm going to start with my basket, and my bushel. Oh, we're uh, I'm going to sketch this out, give you guys time to catch up, and then I'm going to talk about what a bushel is. Do you know what a bushel is? I want you guys to think about what a bushel is, and I also want you to think about all the different types of apples you can name, okay? So here we go again. Let's start with 
to sketch out a horizontal, slightly curved line here. I'm going to actually go up a little bit on this side. That'll be part of my basket. It's like the basket is like a weaving almost to get that look, that two-tone look. Right? Yours can be bigger, smaller, different. Different is good. So I'm making it a little uneven at the bottom. Again, to make it look like it's like the layers of the basket. Okay, and again, I'm going to start with my center apple. I'll try to center it a little bit better this time. Again, this is like the little edge of the wooden type, almost like wicker basket. And you guys could put those little lines in there if you want to. Those are like the staple lines. So they like staple it together. All right, this time I'm not going to forget the apple off to the side. And my little stem. Okay, I'm going to sketch out my apples. And you don't even have to write the apples if you don't want to. And then if you want, again, if you want to add those horizontal wood line planks, you can, but you don't have to. And again, I would sketch it out with a ruler. Horizontal line, horizontal line. All right, there you have it. So that's my good one. All right, so let's talk about apples. All right. A bushel and a peck definition. Have you ever heard of a bushel and a peck? It means a lot or a great amount. So if you ever hear of a bushel of apples, a bushel of corn, a bushel of pumpkins, it means a great amount, okay? This is, expression is used to emphasize large amounts. Usually people use it to say they love someone very much. And there's actually a book about that as well.
Packs and bushels are standard forms of dry measurements, right? So you don't want to fill up a bushel full of water. One, it would run out. And again, dry. So anything dry, again, like apples and pumpkins and corn. A pack is about two gallons and a bushel is about four packs. So you guys do the math on that one. Math is not my specialty. <sighs> So here's what I want you guys to start thinking about. How many different types of apples can you name? All right, start thinking about that. All right, so there, there's your little, I gave you math and I gave you uh, a question about how many different apples you can think of. And you guys can think about that, catch up on your drawing. So here's what I'm going to start using. I am actually going to paint um, a soft layer in the background. So I have these colors. Okay, so this is yellow ochre, and this one is burnt sienna. So I really want this painting to have like a warm look to it. So I'm going to, but I'm going to add white to these. So I'm going to make a tint of them. Okay, I'm going to push this out of the way a little bit. That's my her heavy duty pencil sharpener that I love. Okay. Now I'm going to start with the background. And again, I'm going to do a real soft layer of that um, yellow ochre and some white. Okay. So I'm going to mix it together. I'm not going to wet my brush. I'm going to use a dry brush. And again, I'm just going to mix some yellow. Oh, if you don't have yellow ochre, try yellow, try brown, but make it really, really light because you want contrast, right? You want the contrast in the background. So I'm going to start with horizontal brush strokes. And because I do want it to have that wood look, I like the different value. So it doesn't have to be completely even, meaning it could be light in areas and darker in others. So I'm going to add a little bit more of that yellow ochre. I'm going to paint right over my Sharpie line. And I can still see through it. If you want to trace your drawing in Sharpie after you get it all drawn out, you are welcome to do that. See how it's uneven? So I think it gives it a nice wood texture and it makes it more interesting, right? And then I'll add some lines for details later. And you could do it any color you want, but you just want to think about the contrast that you're going to have with the apples. And you guys, again, I know you're thinking about all the different kinds of apples out there. You don't have to make a red apple. You can make a... Macintosh, a Granny Smith, your favorite apple. You could have a variety pack, right? You can make whatever kind of apples you like. All right, once I get done with my background, we're going to talk about all the different apples that you can think of.
And what color is your bushel going to be? You have to think of the contrast. You want to make sure that your bushel and your apples are like dominant. You want them to be brighter and stronger, richer in color than your background. That's why you want to lighten up your background. And don't worry if you go inside the line because if you're using acrylic, it's going to cover, right? It's going to cover all my mistakes. So if I go inside the line, when I start painting in my basket, it'll cover it up. I'm going to go all the way down to the bottom. Now, maybe you want to make a table. Maybe you want to make a tablecloth. Ooh, you know, like a, a red and white checkered tablecloth would be cute. Or a black and white, like a gingham tablecloth, like a picnic. Or grass. horizontal brush strokes. Thanks, Dolores. Bella and Irina, glad you could join us. I'll slow down a little bit. It's okay. So I just did the sketch. And again, I was talking before, you don't have to do apples. You guys can do a, a bushel of pumpkins or a bushel of corn, whatever you want because it's your artwork, right? So I'm just doing the background. horizontal brush strokes. All right. So you guys Let me shut off my sound. I'm also trying to read the comments on my iPhone. <laughs> All right, so. Let's go back and talk about the different types of apples. Are you ready? While U.S. grows more than 100 apple varieties, the following varieties are the most produced. Fuji, Gala, Pink Lady, Golden Delicious, Granny Smith, Honeycrisp, Macintosh, Red and Delicious. Which one's your favorite? Did I not name your favorite? And I want to give you some inspiration too. So we talked already, you guys, this is a bushel, right? And a bit bushel is actually a form of measuring dry goods. And it also means a lot, a bunch, a large amount. 
So that is a large amount of apples, isn't it? And look, it looks like a variety, a different variety of apples. Apples, 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 and more apples. Have you ever gone apple picking? Have you? It's really fun. You should do it. Stay away from the worms. And don't ever bite into an apple with a worm. Have you ever done that? That's gross. Okay. And don't don't pick the ones with the holes in it. Sorry. Let the animals have those. All right. So now, again, I want you guys to think about what color apples you want to do. And I'm going to do the dark lines later in my wood. I'm going to do actually my basket next, my bushel. That's why I showed you guys the picture of the bushel. So think of it like, again, like a two-tone. So you guys can use yellow. You can use yellow ochre. You can use burnt sienna. I'm going to try a little burnt sienna with some yellow. I'm going to mix it. Let's see if I like this color. That's not bad. So again, you guys, if you don't have yellow ochre or burnt sienna, you can use brown. You can use yellow. So it's like I'm going to make my basket two-tone. I'm going to make this one a little bit darker down here. Again, in here, you can use any color you want to. Just make sure that it's it stands out against your background color. It's almost like a pattern, isn't it? every other one. Then I would continue it down here at the bottom. I think I need one more. So I'm actually going to, I'll put one more in here, right? I think I missed one. So I don't even need a line. But if you guys want, you don't have to do it. I'm going to put one more in here. It's kind of big. Break up that big space there. Okay, so you can use that same color. I'm going to make it a little bit bigger. You can use that same color and add a little bit of white to it and then do this section a little bit lighter, but not as light as the background, right? You got to have the contrast. So you can make it a different color, but definitely a different value. So you want to make it more intense. All right, so I'm going to start with, by adding a little bit of white to it and see what I think of the color. Not light enough, so I'm going to put a little bit more white in there. So when you add white to a color, it's called a tint, T-I-N-T. -T. So again, it's lighter than that one section, but darker than the background. Pick 
painting right over those dark lines. And we can always outline it later too, to make it stand out. Or I can put more white back here, which I think I'm gonna do. Once I get this painted, if I want more contrast, I can lighten up my background. How about pumpkin pie, or not pumpkin pie, pumpkin's on my mind. How about, because I'm looking right at this, right? You guys can do pumpkins too, but how about apple pie? Have you ever baked an apple pie? How about a Granny Smith apple pie? I know Emma and Bella were just saying that they love Granny Smith. They're very tart. See how close that is in color? That's why I want to lighten up the background a little bit more. But I'm going to do this part first. Again, too dark. I'm going to scoop up a little bit more white. Lighten. And I'm just mixing it right on my canvas. Okay, now you can, again, you can mix up another color to do the horizontal, like it's slightly curved to give it that dimensional look, right? So we're trying to get it to look a little bit dimensional. So you can mix up another color, or again, you can just lighten it a little bit, or maybe put a little bit more yellow in it. I'm going to add a little yellow and a little white. And I'll see once I get it on there. Too yellow? Eh, I kind of like it. Yeah, I like it. I'm painting over wherever I want inside the line. Okay. All right, you guys, how's it coming? You guys keeping up with me? And again, once I like outline it and lighten the background, it'll have a little more contrast. Okay, I'm gonna do this other horizontal part here. And this part inside the basket, we can put like a little grass in there or hay, or nothing at all. It could just be the basket. That would be up to you. Right now I'll paint it the basket. Or the bushel. I keep calling it a basket.
So you know what, before I use the really bold colors like the dark and the red and stuff, I'm just gonna lighten up my background a little bit because I don't wanna bump into red like once I get it on there because then I'm gonna end up with like pink smudges in my background. So again, I wanna make it have more contrast. So I'm lightening up. See if I lighten up the background. See how it makes it stand out more? So I'm just, I just scooped up some white and my bro dirty brush, I didn't even wash it off. Over here too, see, I wanna have, make it stand out more. So I do that by lightening the background. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. Over here. Just lighten it up a little bit. Give it a little more contrast. I'm going to blend it in a little. Horizontal brush strokes. Horizontal brush strokes. A little better. Yeah. And then again, once we outline, it'll look even better than that. So, all right, let's do it. Now I, you guys, again, I am going to do red apples. Okay. I wore red today in honor of red apples. So, but you can use any colors you want to. I am going to start with my middle apple. Can you guys see me okay? And you can put, I didn't put a leaf on here, but we can add a leaf. I think the green will bring it to life, right? Now you guys know right now it's pretty flat. You see, it's just red. It, I love to see the brush strokes. I love to see like different value. So I could put some white in here to highlight it. Cause right now it's just red. You see that? It's just, sorry, It's to me it's kind of boring, right? So watch, I'm just gonna put a little bit of white on my brush. I didn't wash it off. I'm just gonna put a little highlight in there and I'm following the line of my apple. You see that? So my white is just following that. So it gives it a little highlight. You could do it in here too. It'll give it a little dimension. And I'll, I'll make it darker also, but I want to do this part first. So you definitely want to see the difference from the apples. So I'm going to lighten this side up so that when I paint this apple in red, now again, you can make this apple, you know, green or pink, but I'm going to do mine red. Okay, and the same thing, I'm gonna give it a little highlight off to the side here. So it's not so flat. Give it a little dimension. My lines are following the shape of the object. And then when you guys, we can darken it up too, but again, I don't want to add the dark yet.
So my red right here is gonna blend into the other one. So again, I'm gonna to have to separate those and I can make it a little bit darker. All right, so now just to make it a little bit darker, I'm gonna put a touch of brown. Where's my brown? Oh, there's my brown. So I'm gonna warm, I'm gonna warm up my red a little bit with some brown. Really good to again give it some depth. You see that? You can also do it with black if you want. Follow the shape of your object. You can do it here too. That's pretty dark, right? So I'm just going to blend it in a little bit more. So when you add dark to a color, it's called a shade. When you add light to a color, it's called a tint. See how straight that is? That's like a vertical line. That's not giving it dimension. So I'm going to curve my brush stroke. And we, oh, let's do the other apple. I forgot about the other apple. Why do I keep forgetting about this apple down here? Because you're not in the bushel. Oops, I just got out of the line. That's okay. So it was still wet, so I was just able to wipe it off with my finger. You can always use a paper towel. Or if you're patient, you can let it dry and paint over it. I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I'm not patient. So again, it just wiped off with my finger. Acrylic paint is non-toxic, okay? Just... Don't go eating it, but it's not toxic. I have accidentally drank the paint water. It's disgusting, but I'm still here to talk about it. Okay, so again, let's give this one a little dimension here. Let's put a little white in there. Put a little white over here. Curve it. And then a little dark. So I'm, again, I'm just going to put a little of that brown in there to warm it up. Okay. Coming along, right? Not perfect. Now, you guys, if you want to do green stems or leaves, oh, that's great. I'm going to do that next. I would not make it too, too green. Like, maybe add a little yellow in it or a little brown and warm it up. So I'm mixing a little yellow and green together. It's still pretty bright. Because you guys know that stems are really like almost brown, but I don't want to use any more brown. I'm going to put, I mean, not by itself. I am going to warm it up with a little bit of brown in here. See, it just softened it up a little bit. It wasn't so bright green, but you can make it bright green if you want to. Because it's your artwork. 
Again, I'm kind of going for that rustic look, so I want my green not to be too bright. Enough to know it's a stem, right? And if you guys, I didn't add a leaf yet, I'm gonna do it in a brighter green just so you can see it better. Maybe I'll put a little leaf right here. Can you see that? Now it looks like a tomato. Better? I don't know, to me it looks like a tomato from the garden, a big juicy tomato. All right, let's try a little bit more yellow in it. I'm gonna put a leaf on this one too. How about if we put two leaves on this one? And again, if you guys want to make like, you know, little sprigs of hay coming out or grass or, I mean, whatever you want, I'm going to try that. But it has to stand out like, do you like that look? Now my red is still wet, so I got some in there, but I think it looks cool. I'll, I'll show you in a second up close. I like when paint smudges, you know, and it's not planned, but it looks cool. I'm going to put a little brown in this side to make it different than the basket. Okay, so I want you to see up close. So you can see those smudges. You see that? I like the way that looks. I'm going to just cover up my marker line a little bit more. And again, if you want it lighter, add a little bit of white to it. You want to highlight it? Put a little, I need a little highlight up here on my apple, like right here, right here, right here. You can put some highlights on your leaves too. Okay, so let's do, before we do the apples, and again, if you guys have a Cricut machine, you can do you know, any word with your Cricut. You can totally write it by freehand, or you can use a stencil. Oh, I forgot, I forgot the apple again, you guys. The bottom apple is neglected. See how bright that green is? Should I leave it that bright? I'm going to do the leaf a little yellower. Apple for the teacher. Do kids still give teachers apples? Mm, so that one needs a highlight too since I'm always forgetting about it. Just gonna give it a little right there. Uh, 
Okay, so let's do the lines in the background. I'm going to start with a softer brown, like a burnt sienna. And let's see how it looks. If it's too dark or too light, I'm not sure. Go slow. Not bad. It could be a little bit darker. So again, that's like a burnt sienna. You can use black if you want to, but again, I feel like this artwork is more warm colors. So. That's why I'm using a brown. And I can even go into it with a darker brown too. I'll show you, I'll make it look a little bit more dimensional by adding, right now I'm still just using the burnt sienna or brown. If you guys want to add a little yellow to it, you can do that too. So this is just giving the illusion of like wood. Give it a rustic look. You don't have to do it. All right, I am going to put just a little bit of a darker brown in there. And it doesn't even have to be a straight line. And it doesn't have to be solid. I want you guys to see it up close so you can see how it's like two-tone. You see that? And it's not perfect. I'm going to clean up that apple line later. Maybe I put a little bit of that darker brown in here. Do you like that? Give it a little depth here. So if you're going to outline it, don't use black. It'll just be too harsh. Try a dark brown if you have one. See, that makes it stand out just a little bit more. You can even do it here. especially if you don't have the contrast with the back background, give it a real light brown outline. If you don't have a steady hand, you can always use a marker or a crayon to outline it. Just let your paint dry. Or maybe you're using crayons and colored pencils to create this whole project.
How's it coming? Is it looking like a basket? Are you doing different colors? So you guys, again, you guys could be using a variety of supplies. You could make this design on a coffee mug or a t-shirt or, right? Whatever you want. Your sketchbook. You could make a little worm coming out of it. That would be gross, but could be cute. Free worm with your apple. How about that? Or maybe the worm is an extra nickel. And if you guys want, you could put those like staple lines. How the basket is held together. Hey, girls are here. All right. All right, you guys, Emma and Bella are here. Yay. Hi, girl. Hello. It's a an apple. Oh, one. perfect. Look at that little baby bush. That's honey crisp. Wait, honey crisp and what else? Fuji. That's a Fuji. Fuji. Oh, those are beautiful apples. Did you pick those? This is my favorite one, the honey crisp. It's delicious. I, mean, I love honey crisp. Okay, for my painting today, I use tempera paint sticks. Very nice. I love your basket. Oh, and apples, like the whole entire like the whole bushel is five dollars because of I love it. That's like a well, a dollar and a quarter an apple because you have four apples, right? <laughs> Although those are so big apples in there. Giant apples. I think they should be five dollars each. <laughs> well, I the, have even bigger apples. It's the inflation. Oh. Inflation, right? Oh my gosh, that looks great. And What's I, on the I, table? Yes. <laughs> What's yes. on the, what, the painting? What do you have the white stuff on the table? I can't see that. Oh, um. Grain. I don't know. <laughs> Let me see. I know it looks cool. I just didn't know what it was. Wait, this? Yes. It's just little things like you take a tube of paint and you dip it in. The... Oh, like it gives it some texture. Uh -huh. Ah, like grain. It looks like grain. I love it. <laughs> it looks so cool. Okay, this is kind of unrelated, but I figured out to make paper claws. <laughs> like I need lots of them. Fantastic. <laughs> They're fun. Oh, or we could show us one day. We could do a paper cloth project. <laughs> yeah, we can do some origami. Those uh, they kind of remind me of like Edward scissor hands. Right? Uh -huh. Yeah, they do. <laughs> well, thanks, girls. Oh, or like oh like a, what's Wolverine. it? Wolverine. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah, Wolverine. That would be more up to date than <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Very cool. That's very cool. We should do a, a quick little project one day. Yeah, we could do some origami. Mm -hmm. Some like um, origami. Yeah, cake. like origami. We could also try to make some little cranes. Mm. Do you remember how to make those? I don't remember how to make them, but they're not super they hard. They're kind of hard, though. Those, you know those little Japanese cranes? Yes. And I have to tell you, I struggle with that stuff. I struggle with origami, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is tricky. Yeah, we yeah. can help you. Thank you. I could we could do that one day. I would love to. Yeah, that would be fun. Definitely. Awesome. You guys, thanks so much. All right. Thank you, Denise. Thank Bye. You. Thank Bye. You Bye. Good job, as always. Heart, look at my dirty hand. <laughs> awesome. Those are our members, Emma and Bella and Irina, doing an awesome job, as always. Okay. And they're way ahead of me. So, because I haven't even gotten to the texture. I love how Bella was doing the texture 
with that tube of paint. So let me get my lettering done. I'm going to use the darker brown for this one. $5. I should change mine to $5. See how you can think outside the box, change the design, use different supplies. I want one of their apples. Those apples look good. All right, I got it. I'm going to try to add some texture next. Okay, so we can do, let me finish outlining this over here. Let me even put a little, I wanted to fix this. Fix the edges on my apple, they're a little rough. All right, let's try some texture. So I loved how they were trying different things. Now, let's do, hmm, I had a, do you guys have a palette knife? You can use a palette knife to try. You know what I'm going to use? I'm going to use a plastic knife. Okay, I have a plastic knife here and it's already dirty, but I'm going to try a little bit of brown on here. And you guys can use just like Bella did. Look at I'm just like scraping it on there. I can even use the handle too. See that? Give it a little texture. I'm going to dip it some more of the paint. So I save my plastic where just to experiment with. So again, I'm just using the handle right now of a plastic knife. And I'm rubbing it on there to give it some texture. You don't have to do it. And if you're going to do it, just be real careful that you don't bump into your wet paint, right? Put some down here. I like to do it around the edges, almost like it's going to frame it, right? So I'm giving it the illusion of texture. Now, what's the worst that can happen if you don't like it? You can paint over it. Just let it dry, right? If you don't like it, you would just paint right over it after. Start out with a little bit. See if you like it and then just keep going.
you can use a plastic fork too. I couldn't find my plastic fork. It's probably here somewhere. See that? Do you like that look? I'm going to go around the edge over here too. That's a little dark. I didn't mean to make it that dark, but that's okay. Shh, no one knows your mistakes. Just, I meant to do that. I'm going to smudge that in a little bit more. Let's keep going up here. See how it just gives it a little bit more depth, a little bit more interest? And that's what Bella was doing with her white. That's why I liked that look on the bottom. I was like, what is that? First of all, I forgot to do the texture. And second of all, it looked really cool. It made it more interesting. Now, you might like it, you might not. If you don't like it, don't do it. Or if you did it and you don't like it, paint over it. Or do another one. <laughs> you can always make it lighter by adding white to it. I did mine pretty dark. I'm trying to create like this border around my artwork. Let's do it across the top. I'm going to go back to using the pointy part of my knife. So again, you guys, I'm just using a plastic old knife to create this texture on my canvas. Oh, I went through the A. It kind of looks cool, doesn't it? It kind of goes with the background. I didn't mean to do that. It's still wet, so be careful. Shh, no one knows, right? No one knows your mistakes but who you tell. You guys would never know that I didn't mean to do that. I just want you to realize that it's all part of the journey. Experimenting. Now you guys can always, always, always use a paintbrush. I'm going to go back into it with a paintbrush. Right? It just becomes a little bit more solid.
Which one do you like better? Do you like it better with the brush or just like the knife? All right, stop while you're ahead, okay? Don't overdo it. Now, again, I'm just gonna show you real quick. If there is a part that you don't like or it gets too dark, like maybe this part right here, see how solid. I'm just gonna go back into it with some white to soften it up. And I'm gonna leave it alone because you can't overpaint, which I feel like I'm doing. So I'm going to stop. I keep saying that and then I keep going. Did you ever do that? All right, I'm going to stop. So I hope you enjoy our bushel of apples for today. And again, go back into your basket too. Add some texture there. I forgot to do that. Real quick, I know I keep saying I'm going to stop, but look, same thing. You can add some vertical lines in here to give it some texture highlight it don't make it too flat right so you want to add lights and darks in here follow the line of your basket you could do the same thing with the top part here give it a little highlight before we go And again, you guys can always come back to it on another day. You know, after you paint for so long, you should take a break just so you can come, come back and look at it with fresh eyes. So there you guys go. All right. There's our Apple art class for today. I'm Denise with Artists at Heart, and I will see you guys again real soon. Thank you for creating with me. Bye, you guys. Thank you guys so much.